What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball to Bowl mini series. As y'all know by now, the Ball to Bowl mini series is real talk with real men about the ups and downs of the hair loss journey, as well as manhood. Today, I got a special guest with me, my boy Shaquan out of Jersey. Shaquan actually is a mutual friend of mine. We have a mutual friend in common, Jai, who connected us, obviously, because you know how that goes. Quan, I appreciate you for joining us today, bro. Kick game to the people. Give them a little intro, man. Yes, sir, bro. I appreciate you for having me on here to, to talk to you today. Uh, my name is Shaquan. I'm based out of, uh, well, I'm from New Jersey, currently based out of D.C. I moved out here about like six years ago for work. Um, you know, for work, I currently, I work, I'm a, a CPA by trade, but I work in in consulting uh, for a small a small firm based in D.C. Um, yeah, I moved, like I said, I moved out here six years ago for that. You know, aside from, you know, the uh, the professional side or I guess my, my corporate job, I'm also an aspiring chef. Uh, so I've been trying to, you know, make an impact out here in D.C. with that and running it up, having it, having fun, also embracing my my baldness. So I'm, I'm happy to be here. I mean, <laughs> kick game to another young brother that may be out there battling with the, the hair loss journey uh, and get him to, you know, join the team. So, yeah, bro. Like I said, I appreciate you for having me here today, man. You already know, bro. So you, you just said you into the the cooking and the chefing, man. So tell us what's your what's your go-to meal, man? What's the meal that you got? If you're gonna whip up, you wanna say, say you got a, a woman you wanna impress or something. I know you get nice in there. So what's the meal <laughs> you would whip out to like really to really kind of show off? Man, you try to set me up, man. <laughs> uh, I mean, I I I think I'll go with like some something relatively simple. Um, but like, it just has a nice aesthetic, like, uh, mashed potatoes, asparagus with like, uh, you know, some Cajun salmon, you know, a little razzle dazzle, put some cream sauce or something on there. It's very, very light, very simple, but you know, you look at it, it's going to look crazy. So like something like that is always, always a go-to, you know what I mean? First date kind of vibes, you feel me? Already, no doubt, no doubt. Hope y'all taking notes. He just gave y'all free game right there, fellas. That's free game. (laughs) Ask Jai about that one. Yeah. Uh, no doubt, no doubt, <laughs> no doubt. So Brody, man, um, like I mentioned to you a bit earlier, one of the biggest and most prevalent concepts um, with the Come Home brand is the idea of home. As we know, everybody can relate to the idea and concept of home. It means something different to everybody, bro. So when you hear the concept or the word home, what is that? What memories does that bring back up for you, bro? Um. I would I would I would say for my first thought I would I would think of like at home as in like New Jersey, uh, my family being able to go home, uh, or just given you know what we've been going through over the past years I've only been home a few times, uh, so like that that's probably what resonates with me the most. Uh, you know I, I'm very family oriented, love connected with my family, going home to see them as I can, but you know this, this virus hasn't you know permitted me to be able to do so as much as I would like. Um, so I would say that my siblings, I'm um, the eldest of, of five children. I got two brothers and two sisters. So, yeah, I mean, like all of that is, is, is home for me in Jersey. And then not, not to mention my friends as well. Uh, whenever I do go home, I'll make sure, you know, I try and make sure I check in with all of them, make sure everybody's straight. You know what I'm saying? All yeah, that yeah. Yeah. So when you, when you talk about home man, you mentioned Jersey, so I gotta, I gotta ask you a couple of sports questions to kind of see where you sit when it comes to these teams, you know what I'm saying? So uh, obviously y'all got the Jets um, and y'all got the Giants, you know what I'm saying? Who who are you rocking with up there? Neither one of them, bro. Oh, neither word. One uh, neither one of them. Cowboys, baby. Okay, <laughs> okay. How about them Cowboys? How, how did that happen, bro? How you end up a uh, Cowboy fan out in Jersey? Uh, so my dad, is, my dad is a Cowboys fan. So he, uh, I really didn't have much of a choice. Um, yeah, I just grew up watching him, watching the Cowboys, and it stuck with me. So here I am. I know it's been a while. I know you're probably going to have some jokes. It's been a while, but listen, I'm riding, I'm riding strong. <laughs> How you think they're going to do this year? Dak is back. Uh, they say Zeke done lost some weight. He's looking like, you know, Ox again. Is that, yeah. I think they say the O-line bounced back. So how are you feeling about this upcoming season? I'm, I'm feeling good. I don't know if it, if I was gassed because of uh, this this season of Hard Knocks. But yeah, the Cowboys look good. I've been watching them. I watched the last episode yesterday. Uh, we look good. I, I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling good, man. We'll we'll see what happens when we step out on that field tomorrow. <laughs> say that. Say that. Last question, man. So from from a sports standpoint, you come up in Jersey, so I'm assuming you maybe was a, a New Jersey Nets fan potentially coming up, or how did basketball fall in the, in the family? Um, 
honestly, I, I was a, just an NBA fan. Like, I never really had uh, a specific team that I follow. Uh, like, I did gravitate towards the Nets, you know, back in the Jason Kidd and Kerry Kittles days. Like, but I would I wouldn't call myself like a, a big Nets fan. Okay, so if you if you had a, I guess let me. I'm not gonna ask you about a team then. If from an NBA standpoint, who is your favorite player there? Ron, come on, man. Ron's your Ron's your go-to. Okay, okay. It's easy. No, doubt. <laughs> no, doubt. no doubt. I'm a Kobe fan. I was a big Kobe fan growing up. So when you know, I was this big like Bron, Kobe, Kobe, Bron. So I, it was hard for me to be a Bron fan when Kobe was still playing. Yeah. But now that Kobe's retired, you know, rest in peace to, to who I believe is the GOAT. Now it's good to see LeBron, because now he's within the Lakers organization. I can respect and have love for, for LeBron now. So I definitely feel that. And it's going to be an interesting year for them this year, too. They uh, retooled yeah, the man. team, you know what they, I'm saying? They got a whole, whole new squad. Are you a, a Lakers fan? Nah, so I was really just a big Kobe fan. You know, coming up in Carolina, um, the Hornets weren't great at all. So I was just a fan of players. So I was a big AI fan. And I was a huge Kobe fan. So right now, my big, uh, my number one player is Dame Time. You know? so I'm a big Dame Lillard fan. That's my guy. So uh, much respect to that man. Yeah, I'm, I'm riding. He, he just posted something about he's coming back to the Portland Trailblazers. So we'll see how long that can last because I don't think they team got much better, if better at all. They might have got worse. So, but yeah, we'll see, bro. We'll see. Anyway, dog, man, like I said, today I see you got the crazy beard, the smooth ball, <laughs> but um, dog, I, 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 obviously I know it wasn't always like that. You wasn't always rocking it like this. So if you could, my G, get in a time machine a bit and take it back to like, you know, middle school days or high school days, whenever you can remember, take me back to Quan back then. What was your, where were you rocking, man? What kind of hair did you have back then? Yeah, so I'll go like middle school, um, like early middle school, oh, I guess elementary school into early middle school, always just a low, dark Caesar. That that was me. Like I had the waves spinning, made sure I always kept them things tight. Like <laughs> always, always, always. Then I, I wanted to grow them out, grow my hair out a little bit. So late in middle school, I started growing my hair. I could probably like middle of middle school, I started growing my hair. Uh, you know, you first start off with the little, little ugly twist, you go okay. through that phase. And then I had like the the baby cornrows that I ain't really have no hang time. And eventually I got to uh, to dreads like so I locked my hair up. I had dreads um, from freshman to junior or yeah, or no, I would say eighth grade to to junior year in high school. Uh, after that, I just let it go, man. My mom wanted me to cut my dreads. It was just too much of a hassle trying to keep up with them, even though those was like my prized possessions at that time. Man. That was super hard for me to let go of, uh, but she brought me into doing it, so I did it. Uh, did your mom do your hair? No, so my mom, you said, did she do it? Yeah, was she the one doing your hair? Uh, when I was getting braids, she was doing it. Once I got dressed, she stopped doing my hair. So what uh, was she, it? So where I lived, so my cousin would, would uh, do, like, retwist my locks, and my cousin lived, I had, by that time, I had moved to a different town, and she lived, like, an hour and a half away, and I didn't have a whip. And where I live was like pretty rural. There wasn't no public transportation for me to be able to get there as I needed to. So it was just, I was walking around with just dirty looking dreads in between, <laughs> in between retwists. Like, I mean, I was, I was hurting, but I mean, so she, she encouraged me to cut them. Um, yeah, I cut them and then I just went back to a shortcut. Uh, you know, through all throughout college, I had a, a shortcut, like again, Waves was still spinning. Like, <laughs> the was, they, was they really like that? Was they really like that though? Because people were capped, bro. People were capped. Nah, I, got, I got pictures, bro. I got, <laughs> <laughs> I got pictures. I got pictures of the glory days, man. I, hey, I will hold on to those memories forever for moments like this, which man, when people don't believe. Oh, yeah, really? nah, they, they was legit. And then I would say, um, you know, I was good. I was good all throughout college. I showed, I showed no, no signs of a, a receding hairline any of that throughout college, grad school. Um, I would say probably after maybe 2015, 2016, that's when we started to, to lighten up a bit. My barber is How old were you at this point? 20, what's your age? Uh, 25, 26. Okay, okay. Yeah, 25, 26. But I, I'm still rocking out. Like, I'm good. Like, I'm still keeping, you know, a dark Caesar. I don't got to cut it too low. You know, as the years progressed, the hairline's going back a little bit. <laughs> seeing a little bit more of my forehead but like you know my no dude at that age really wants to let let go of his hairline it's like a prideful thing you know um so uh it got to a point where uh you know my hair was like 
the corners is thinning out. Um, and I'm like, all right, now I just got to like, keep it, keep it as low as possible. Like I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to cut it all the way off, but I had, you know how T.I. we having like the super low haircut where like, it's, you almost, you basically bald, but like you still got to cut just to say, I mean, I'm still, I'm still holding on. Um, and then ultimately I, I probably did that for a couple of years. And then hey, so ultimately, far, before, before you, um, when you, when you started like thinning right here and started going to a low cut, was, was other folks noticing yet? Or was it something that you was dealing with internally? Were people giving you jokes or you was kind of just, it was just internally? Uh, no, I, I know, I definitely noticed first. People would mention it, but it wasn't like, it wasn't anything crazy. Okay. Because once it really started thinning, I was keep, I was keeping a lower cut. So you could, it like, I wasn't out here looking like, looking <laughs> wild, but it's like, you know, I, I recognized that it was, it was thinning now. Like my barber would even tell me like, oh, you want me to cut it? And just keep it um, like even, like you know, just even out the corner, like yeah, the rest of your head, even with the corners, so you can't really see. And at that point, when you start doing that, you gotta get a haircut like every week. So now it's becoming yeah. a financial burden too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I can't keep doing this. Um, but yeah, I, I held on to it, man. I held on to it. But no, I didn't. I didn't get like, you know, dudes. Dudes love. Dudes love to laugh, like especially so. Like it was never any like crazy public ridicule, but the the group chats used to stay buzzing. So, so fam, that's funny, man. I think you did it the right way, bro. Cause I, I was down bad with mine. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a pick and show you. But when I was going through it, I, my homies were killing me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> killing me. And I told you like the reason the bread is called come home. Cause my guys on a regular would be like, nah, bro, you got to come home. They would just be on my neck. So it was bad, bro. So I'm glad you had a crew that really wasn't on your neck. Or I'm glad you just was ahead of the game with it. So you was able to make sure that you kept it low enough early so you wouldn't yeah, catch those yeah. jokes. All right, let me see if I can find this pick, bro. You're going you gonna to kind of bug out. And I'll, I'll be embarrassed to show this, but it was this how bad I was, bro. Like, Oh, yeah, you was bugging, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro. Yeah, you was bugging, bro. Bro, look at it, dog. I was walking around <laughs> all crazy, fam. Yeah, yeah. All crazy, bro. <laughs> And the crazy thing is, you know, I was I was so bad at that point, G, that I was I would go to the barbershop, get a cut or whatever, and I'll put a hat on and meet. You know what I'm saying? I'm paying to get a cut and I'll and I'll cover it up with a hat immediately. So it was yeah. like it, it, it was scary times back there, bro. Scary times, man. But um, all right, so you you rocking it low now, the barber's kind of finessing it for you, you're rocking it much lower. Um as, as you're wearing it low, when does it hit to you that like, oh, okay, like I might, I might, I might gotta come home. Uh, I mean, people always told me like it was time, it's time to just let it go. Like I, I wasn't, I wasn't down crazy bad, but it's like you get in these cuts, like they, it's already you. I can see like you know what I mean, <laughs> you basically bald already. Like you might as well just do it. Uh, plus, like I always had the beard, so it was like you got the beard, like why not just. Let it rock. Um, but, you know, I ain't listening to none of that. I'm like, listen, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not doing it until I have to do it. What ultimately forced me to do it is honestly the coronavirus. So when mm -hmm. the pandemic hit, the pandemic hit, you know, like I had probably just got a haircut maybe like a week before or something. Once the, once the pandemic hit, you know, all the barbershops shut down. I was looking, I was bad for two months. I'm, you could, I was li literally in my crib like working from home still with a, with a hat on just because, you know, my hair started to grow and these corners just, they was not doing nothing, bro. No matter what I put on them, it was, it was time. So I say the pandemic hit around uh, like early March or so last year, by early May, I had to let it go. Like two months, I, I weathered the storm for two months. My hair got long, the corners didn't. I'm just like, nah, man, I, I can't do it. Cause I don't know how, how much longer the, the barbershop is even going to be, going to mm -hmm. be closed. So at that point I was like, I had bought actually uh if you want to get into the like a, the first product I used, yeah, yeah. I, had, I had bought like a, a whole bevel kit. Okay. Um, maybe maybe like mid to late April, I had bought it, and it was just sitting there, and I would just leave it on my counter. Like, do I really want it? it? The intentions of like, yo, I'm a, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I I knew I was gonna do it, probably like a month into the panty into the pandemic. Um, but like I just I I mean I just I was just holding on. Like <laughs> somehow some way we gonna make this work, and. Yeah, you know I mean, I was, I just, I just bought it. My and one of my homies, he had did it, you know, not too long before me. So he's like, man, just do it. He gave me his, mm -hmm. his bevel discount code, so I copped it, and I just wasn't, wasn't ready to do it. I just said I ain't want to do it yet. But then one day in May, I want to say it was like mid-May last year. I was like, all right, man, like, 
it's time. Like, it's time. And I just didn't have it looked back since. Wow. So, okay. So you had a homie that kind of, so he had came home a while before you did or not? Too no, long? no. Maybe like a month, a may, maybe, a, maybe a little bit more a month than I did. So, but, so why? So y'all obviously was going through the hair loss process at the same time. So was y'all like chopping it up with each other? Like, yo, like, I may got to do this at this point or was something y'all wasn't been talking to with each other about? Yo, actually it was by surprise. Like, he like, in the, I go say no days. <laughs> he was down bad for a little bit. <laughs> he was down bad for a little bit. And like, I mean, he he sometimes was the, the joke in the group chat. Uh, and I think one day I was randomly talking to him, like he just FaceTimed me. And I'm like, oh, like you did it. Like, but that was that was the battery I needed to do it too. Cause like, yeah. he was definitely the two that, that needed it. He needed it the most. Hey, I, you got you to plug me with it. I want to get him on the episode. So you got to plug oh, yeah, me with it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll definitely, I'll definitely get you with it. But don't tell him I told you that. <laughs> <laughs> so so you 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 finally, like, decide today's the day. You got the bevel bevel blade with you. Like, yo, it's time. So um, I'm, I'm assuming you pull up in the mirror. And the bevel blade is um, single blade, right? Mm-hmm. So were you kind of nervous or what? Oh, so listen, I was, I'm telling you. So, like, once, once <clears throat> he told me he did it, we started a, a, a separate group chat with just like the ball homies. Like, yeah. <laughs> so it was four of us in the chat and all three of them had, they was already bald. Two of them had been bald for years. And then myself and the last one, like he was like maybe a little bit over a month ahead and I'm I'm waiting to come home at this point, but I'm getting all the advice that yeah. I can. Like, yo, like, all right, how do I do this? Cause I keep hearing about like people cutting themselves, getting nicks and then like how the, uh, the single blade could be dangerous. Like we really slice your head open. Yep. I think you just froze. You just are oh, you good now? Yeah, so I'm I'm hitting them like yeah, I'm scared to do it. Like <laughs> I still want to slice my head open or whatever. So uh, you know, they sending me like just you know, um outside of like the the bevel products that they use, um, like you know, a a, a stand to hold your the razor, the bowl, you know, what I mean the you know, mix the shaving cream in, um, just others other stuff that they use outside of the bevel products to like prevent um like bumps and stuff like that from coming up just skin like skincare routine so forth and so on I'm trying to like I'm a sponge at this point like trying to absorb as much information as I can even looking at YouTube videos like all right when I do this I gotta actually know like what I'm doing I mean I gotta get like a a, a handheld mirror that I can just hold while I'm I mean in a mirror doing this all this kind of stuff just making sure that when that day comes I'm fully prepared uh so yeah they uh they just they put me on game and uh that's dope, man, to like have that family, bro. You know what I'm saying? Cause at the time I came home, nobody in my direct like gang was there. So they was just killing me with the jokes. I kind of, but not, not, I definitely had friends that were like, you know, homies from college or whatever, like who I could reach out to, but they weren't my direct gang. Yeah. I do remember reaching out to one of my homies from college, like, yo, cause I had seen him rocking it, you know, he was doing his thing or whatever. And I'm like, yo, I'm over here embarrassing myself. Like I'm, I'm down bad every day. And my man's out here like doing this. I'm like, let me, let, yeah. me, let me holler at him and see what's good. And he was able to give me game. So I, I, it's super dope that you had at least three other homies. Y'all had a whole chat and they just like, hey, put you on. Cause that, that's hard. Cause you need that bro going through that. Cause it's not easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, for real, man. Like funny story. Like after I first started, maybe within, you know, my first three shaves or something, like I felt, I felt like a big, like, like bumps forming on the back of my neck. I'm like, yo, like, this is the last thing I wanted from this. Like, how, like, I don't want this to turn into something that just spread across the whole, like, like, what do y'all do? Like, you know, give me some tips. Like it just ran, I ran directly to that chat. Like I didn't look on uh, Google or Instagram, nothing. I went like, and I'm like, yeah, these, these dudes are seasoned. So like, it was definitely nice having them as an outlet and be able to help me, help guide me through that. Cause but yeah, I was that ass panicking, bro. <laughs> like, this can't be it. This is like the one thing I was scared of the most. Like I can't mess up like my skin and stuff. So like, yeah, man, I have to, those, those guys steer me in the right way. And I've been good ever since. So Brody, let's take it back a bit to that, to that exact day. They have been giving you game. You had, you got the product ready. So um, is it like you, did you go to sleep that a certain night thinking like tomorrow I'm doing it? Or like, how did it, how did you really be like, today's the day? Tell me about that. Um, yeah, I think it was just like, I did it. So I know I did it on like a Saturday, right? So I think like that week leading up, I was like, I'm gonna just do it this weekend. Like, I don't got nothing to do. I'm gonna chill. Like, I'm gonna have time. 
to like, you know, be patient with it. I still had a lot of hair on my head. So I'm like, right, I'm gonna get one of my homies to pull up and help me um, like, like use the clippers to like at least get the hair off the like the majority of my hair off first and then I'm gonna I'm gonna do it and but yeah, I, it wasn't like uh uh like I was like oh they like mark my calendar on this day I was like I'm gonna just wait for wait for the weekend to do it I mean it's a, a chill Saturday we're gonna knock it out so you you take it take the blade and I'm sure you might felt like it was a learning curve as you were doing it but you had you had talked to your homies already you had seen videos so you felt comfortable when you took that blade to your head the first time yeah, yeah, I was good. I was good. Oh, but the whole time I used the bevel, so I actually stopped using the bevel. I didn't use it for too, too long. But the whole time that I did use it, I never, I never cut myself. Nice, nice. So you, you, you get it done, bro. You get it done. You top that joint off, and you look in the mirror. What's, the, what's your first reaction, fam? Honestly, my first reaction was like, yo, this looks exactly how I did like pre-pandemic because my haircut was so low. Like you could barely tell the difference. Like. <laughs> I was already bald before, essentially. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Okay, bet, bet, bet. And so it's the it's the penny, right? It's the Panameric. So you ain't quite really seen too many people, I'm assuming, during this time. So you shave it, you seen it, but you know, is it is your friend seeing it? Is it you gotta get on a Zoom work call? Who else is seeing it? And what's their first reaction? Um so yeah, for work, we didn't really have to uh, use Zoom that much, but I think I did tell a couple people at work that I did it and they asked me to see it, so I showed them. But as far as like, you're right, like I wasn't seeing my friends and, and, and all of that. So I thought it would actually be funny to drop a, a pic on the gram when I did it. I actually, I'll show you the pic. This is how I, uh, I revealed it. I did it with just like a little bit of a humor behind it. Let's see if you catch the reference. Yeah, I see this. <laughs> so I dropped, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, back it up a little. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> was, was that like the, like the Drake album flow? The Drake, the nothing was the same joint. <laughs> to let him know I'm I'm here <laughs> and I'm embracing it. <laughs> That's so hard. That, That's yeah, hard. That was it. Was like right maybe like a week after I did it. Uh, I had I dropped the top and then I dropped that pick. Like, what I, was your reaction on the gram, bro? Uh, people was like, it's about time. Like, <laughs> You needed that, but not a lot. It was, it was a, uh, like a lot of people was laughing because they thought it was funny because I, I just I reenacted the, the Drake album cover. But yeah, man, I, it, was a, it was a funny pick. So, G, you, you home now, you, you're built on a gram and everything is everything. Did you feel, because you said like when you looked in the mirror, you felt like you looked, you know, basically the same almost as, you know, pre-pandemic. So were you immediately comfortable with the new look did, or did it take some time for you to get used to like rocking the full ball? Um... I was I was comfortable with it. Uh, I think the only thing that took some getting used to was like the actual like volume in which you got to shave. Yeah. Because like, <laughs> it's not like you, this is not like a haircut. You get a haircut, you know, every every two weeks and maybe a shape up in between. Like, nah, you got to shave. Like, you know, I, most of the time I shave every day. Yeah. But like, at the beginning, it's like, damn, I got to, you know, I got to factor this into my schedule now. Like, you know, and then when you, you use something like a, a single blade, that take a little bit more time. Um, you know, because you gotta be a little bit more delicate with it. Yeah. Um, so I think that was that was the biggest part as, as far as getting used to. But like my like appearance, like I was I was good. It was it didn't really take much adjusting to. Like I, I was straight. Now it was you know going into the summer and I realized like yeah <laughs> your head get a lot hotter in the mm. summer when it's when there's no hair on it. So you know I had to to learn quickly to always keep a, a, a towel on me. And colder too, bro. And colder. Like, you ain't got no hair. You're, you're, oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's facts. That's facts. Yeah. Facts. So, you, um, you know, came home now. You're rocking it. And you just mentioned the idea of, like, you know, the maintenance that's required to keep the clean shave ball. And it's funny, right? Because let me know if you can relate to this coming up. Say you're at the barber shop, you're waiting or whatever, and it's a bald dude in a chair. You're looking at man's like, but now you know the other side you're like yo it's crazy i was trying to give bald men all them jokes because i didn't realize how much work it took for them to you know even more work than it took for us back in the day when we had the waves or whatever you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying so that is funny to, to be on the other side now and think back see, yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's real that's real <laughs> so g um tell me about what you do now today to make to maintain your look what's your current regimen your routine you said you shave every day um mm -hmm. What are you? What kind? What kind of shaving cream are you using? Are you still using the single blade? Walk me through that. 
Uh, so no, I don't use a single blade no more. I like to shave, like I like I don't like to look at shaving as too much of a task. Mm-hmm. So like I prefer to shave like when I'm in a shower every day because it's just a lot easier for me. So I put a mirror in there and I use just uh, honestly I use a Gillette Fusion joint, the uh, the Pro Glide that move when you I mean you go. And I, I actually just so I was using uh, bevel, I was still using bevel shave products. Um, I wanted to switch it up and just see because you know I have been using them for uh, over a year at this point. Um, so I just started using maybe within the past few months, Harry's uh, okay. brand that I found at, at Target. And I actually really love their uh, their shaving cream. It's super smooth. Um, you know, you take the, the blade the, or the, the Pro Glide and it, it just go right back, like nice. clean, like instant. Um, so that's, it's, it's super easy. I could shave my whole head in four, four minutes now. Like it's, yeah. it's a quick, it's quick for me now. Um, after, so like when I, I shave, after I shave, I use a, um, like a, a like a toner, a skin toner. So Trader Joe's sells this rose water. So like right out, well, I'll, I'll wash it. Like I kind of treat my, my, like right after I shave, I kind of treat it like my face, right? So I'll use like face wash um, on my on my head, like after, right immediately after shaving. And then when I get like out the shower, I'll spray some of the rose water, just like I do on my face. I'll, I'll spray that toner on. I mean, that before putting the uh, aftershave on, it re- alleviates you, you know, getting any kind of stings or burn because you know, your pores, uh, is wide open. So, you know, I do the, the face wash, the toner, uh, and then I also use Harry's um, aftershave too. Throw that on there and then I'll throw some, uh, some uh, like I use this coconut body cream also from Trader Joe's on there. I'm a big fan of Trader Joe's, obviously. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I throw that on there and be on my way. Uh, as far as my beard, I use uh, As I Am hair care products. So I use their, um, their, uh, conditioner, uh, just like when I wash, so like I use like a, a I, get, I don't think it's a leave-in conditioner, some kind of conditioner that you should like wash your hair with. And then um, I use their their uh, uh, moisturizer as well. Yeah. And it's, the smell is fire. Okay. No <laughs> yeah. Also use a, a shout out to my homies in Jersey. They they sell this, this uh, oil called Beard Season. And I've been rocking with them for like four years now. The only beer oil I use, fire. Beer season, S Z N or S E A? S Z N. S Z N. I'm a people. What's their Instagram? It's beer season, just the same thing. Beer season, yeah. Say less, say less. I'm definitely going to check them out, man. So, Brody, I got a question for you because, you know, a, a, lot of my, a lot of people know that, you know, hair loss is hereditary a lot of times and a lot of times it falls on your mom's side it's not always on your mom's side but a lot of times people see it maternally on their mom's side so do you know anybody you know on your mom's side that's bald or even it is was your pops balls did you have a feeling that this may happen to you like if you think back on like seeing uncles or things, something like that or this was a complete shot when you start losing your yeah hair? oh no i knew it was coming okay okay, okay. <laughs> i knew it was coming my dad is bald my uh my grandfather on my mom's side is bald my two uncles on my mom's side are bald. I knew it. I knew it. It was written. <laughs> <laughs> right, so you was all right. You was low key prepared already. You knew it was yeah. coming. I held on longer than most though. They was bald when they was like, when my dad dropped the top when he was like 24 or something like that, 23. So he was younger. Okay. I made it, I made it to 29. <laughs> 29, no doubt, no doubt. I did mine when I was 27, Brody. Oh man. All right, man. So we're at the part of the episode where it's really important. Where we let, we make sure that we let all our guests kind of show off the ball, man. We call it the ball check. But Quan, I need you to kind of like show us what you got. Show us what you're working with right now. Yeah, I know it's the pressure. Right? Yes, sir. Stop playing with the boys, man. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, it's our body, man. Oh, for sure, for sure, bro. So, man, I always joke around on my social media and stuff. And I think it's really, it's a moment right now for, for ball for ball guys, and especially ball guys with the beers, definitely a look. I joke on Instagram, I'll be like, yo, ball man are up 10 on everybody else right now in the fourth quarter. But um, you being a ball man, have you starting to feel like you're peeping more people like kind of embracing the look and kind of seeing us get that uh, glow that we deserve? I feel like there's always been a stigma about hair loss um, and being bald in the past, but I feel like there's something happening right now where it's kind of like, oh, no, nah, like, this is a wave. Listen, man, I've never heard a woman crack a joke about a bald man. It's always other men. I don't care what about them men think, bro. Like, boy, the, the ladies love it, bro. Like, I, I'm not worried about what these dudes say, bro. 
talk that yeah, they talk. love it because <laughs> it's funny to me man when i went through it um I, you know i'll meet women now and they'll be like like you had hair like i can't even imagine you with hair they're like mm-hmm. you look so good boy and i'm like that's crazy like yeah i definitely had hair and my hairline was super sharp but thank you you know i still think that's a compliment but the mm-hmm. funny thing is i'm starting to realize that women even when i had like you know a caesar Women don't even look at that as you having hair. They were like, Spring, you didn't have no hair in the first place. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Exactly. So it was funny, like, hearing it from them. But that's a big word. I know so many women that are like, yo, like, you know, ball guys are in, like, for real. Mm-hmm. And there's actually research that's, um, that says that ball men are perceived to be more intelligent, more successful, more dominant, and more powerful than their peers. So there really is this thing about like being bald and walking into a room that people notice man and you know you can even think about there are so many bald men killing in every industry you know Mm -hmm. sports you got jordan you know there's got so many men killing it so we we definitely out here right now so shout out to all the brothers watching this that's repping the game because we out here you know what i'm saying listen bro i I agree with all of those all of those points (laughs) hey g we're gonna go into the next section man this here is our um lightning round basically man so I'm going to ask you a few questions and you just let me know the first answer that comes to the top of your head, bro. Mm-hmm. All right. So first question uh, for many ball, man, we don't obviously don't have the opportunity like we did back in the day to switch up our hairstyles. It's really just this. So men will kind of use hats to kind of switch it up a little bit, add some variety. So what, what would you say is your go-to or like your favorite hat these days? Um, so honestly, I'm not big on hats. I don't really wear hats too frequently in the wintertime I do. Um, and I would say in the fall, winter time, my go-to is just switching it up with a different color scully. Like I got, <laughs> you know, a, a lot of them and I just, depending on what the fit is, I'll just throw a, throw a scully on it to, to match the look. Um, but in like the summer, uh, spring months, I, you know, I really don't wear, wear hats too, too much, but definitely in the winter. Like I got a nice collection of, uh, scullies for me. Now the scullies go dumb in the winter for sure, bro. I'm already knowing. All right. Uh, next question, man. You talked to us a bit about your grooming regimen earlier. You talked about the beard, face, scalp, all that. What would you say is your go-to grooming product? Like a one product, like yo, I, I can't move without this product. What would you say that is? Um, I'm a, it has to be two. It got to be my moisturizer and the oil. Like the moisturizer to to get my beard like looking soft, and then. The, the oil just to give it that shine that, and that, that shine lasts all day. Like those two hand in hand are undefeated. Yo, do, does uh, Bear Seeds do the moisturizer too? You get the moisturizer from somebody else? I get the moisturizer from, uh, it's, as I am, I buy it at Target. Yeah, okay. No doubt, no doubt. I'm going to need you to send me all these links, man. I need to get mine like yours. You know, <laughs> I got you. you. Um, next question, bro. Um, we've talked about it already, how there's so many men uh, kind of killing it in every space that are ball, whether we're talking about sports, talking about Hollywood, we're talking about business, every field, you can see us out here killing it, man. So if you had to name four of the most iconic ball men, dead or alive, that you would put on the Mount Rushmore of ball men, who would you say are the four most iconic? Um, so I would have to go both Kobe and MJ. Sure. Like, two, 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 obviously their the resumes speak for themselves. Um, I would go Common. Ooh, yeah. Common, I'm putting Common up there because I think he he paved the way. I'm not, I know I'm not light skinned, you know, and nor do I want to be, but like, <laughs> uh, he paved the way for you know black ball men uh, with a beard. I think uh, you know he was he was definitely one of the uh, the first to do that. And then I also have to go with with The Rock. You know, yeah, the Rock. Wow. He's one of my one of my favorite actors, so you know I'll, I'll throw him yeah. up there too. Down, no doubt. Yeah, I'm a big fan of all of them you just mentioned, bro. Um, but man, I got I to gotta take it here. Before we continue on with the questions, I got to take it here, bro, because you just mentioned um, Jordan, you mentioned Kobe, you know, some of the greatest to ever do it. So you got to, this just made me bring back LeBron into the situation, because a lot of times when you talk about those two, you got LeBron in the, also in the mix. Um, so what's up with Bron, man? We're going to take it. Bro, there, bro. We got to get him, we got to get him on, on here, bro. <laughs> We gotta get, we gotta get, we gotta get Brian on here, man. We, you need to, you need to sit down with Brian. Yeah. Bro, what's up, what's Brian? Brian stop Brian? running, Brian. Like, what's up? Why, why you can't just come home, Brian? Like for real, bro. You, you at the top of the top. You just, I think he just hit a Billy. I think I heard a clip here oh. of Billy recently. So like, you got a beautiful wife, beautiful family. Like, 
you can't be in the games, Bron, with with the hair like AD talking about Bron. You got to fix the game. <laughs> hey, Bron, we definitely need you up here, and we need you to come home soon. Come rep the game, Bron. We ready exactly, for you. Bro. It's all it's all love on this side, Bron. Come on. <laughs> already, already, bro. Final two questions, my G. Final two questions. Um, a big thing about this ball to ball series is all, one, having people share their story just so you can really reflect. Because a lot of guys, you know, when they dealing with hair loss, some guys go through anxiety, embarrassment, and it's tough to deal with. So a lot of this is about having guys kind of reflect on that and see how they were able to overcome that and be ball and ball now. But really a big part of it is to really give insights to help men who are still struggling right now on that mm -hmm. hair loss journey, G. So if you knew there's some guys watching this right now who are still battling with hair loss, what would be the advice you would give them, Quan? Um, honestly, I would I would say, like just just do it. Like if you feel like you know you you losing your hair, like obviously that's something that unfortunately a, a, a nice chunk of our population has to experience, and it's not the easiest thing to do. But to me, I would rather be bald than you know be the butt of somebody's joke or like you know what I mean. So. And like I said before, man, you never heard, you don't hear women cracking on, on bald men. So like, if, like, who you doing? If you doing it for your homies, you keep it for your, like, who you, <laughs> who you holding on to it for, man? Just, just let it go, man. And, and you know, it's it, it just, it's a, it's a journey in itself too, though. It's a process. You get to learn yourself new, uh, new ways to like groom yourself and, and just, you know, take care of yourself, your skin, all of that. I feel like, you know, setting that regimen is also good for, for your mind. You know, you look good every day. Every day you get out and get a a a, a, a bald head. Like I shave my I shave my head probably at, at least five times, maybe up to seven times a week. I got a fresh bald. You get a haircut, you only getting that once or twice a month. Like, Talk who's, that. Oh, like, who's, oh, who's, cool. who's who's really that's winning cool. here? <laughs> Yo, that's a, you know what I I never thought about it that way, but that's. Yo, yo, my dog is mad at sight for right now. Yeah. Think about it. He just dropped a crazy gym and I've recorded almost 20 plus of these and nobody's put it like that. You know what I'm saying? You, whatever you got going on up there, if you still holding on, you struggling with it and you going to the shop once a week or whatever. And you just, yo, my man is getting a fresh cut every day stepping out the crib. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and that's different. When you put it in that perspective, that's different. That's hard, bro. And something else you mentioned just now that I'm glad you got into is the fact that a lot of men, once we finally do come home and go ball, like it does force us to improve our self-care regimen. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't think I was ever until I came home was more focused on, all right, like my washing my face and my exfoliating, blah, blah, blah. But because you're so forced to maintain this, that then does translate to other areas of self-care. Exactly, exactly. And that's, that's super important for us. For us men too that's not just you know something that the, the women's have to tend to but you know for our own personal well-being bro self-care is extremely important hey Quan, man you be out there getting the pedicures too definitely bro come on man look hey guys to bro. Up. Yeah. <laughs> well you know cleanliness <laughs> is next to godliness brother <laughs> yeah. say that one more time for him bro Clearly, this is next to godly, this man. Come on, man. That's for real, man. So make sure y'all taking care of yourselves in every aspect, man, for sure. Quan, last question for you, Brody. Um, as I mentioned to you earlier, come home. We talk about it from a hair loss perspective. You know, you know what I'm saying? You, look, you still fight, fighting with your hair loss? Hey, give that up. Go ahead, come home. But like, you know, we spell it in French. And that translates to English to mean like a man or as a man, because our big mantra is just to help men embrace their natural evolution. So, bro, if you think about 2021, um, can you tell me personally, in your opinion, what it means to be a man? Um, so I could think of a, a couple a couple words that could, you know, um, contribute to the definition of a man. Um, <clears throat> one of the first one that comes to mind is just strength and not necessarily physical strength, but um, mental strength too. just having the ability um, to just, you know, think powerfully. You know what I mean, just know, and be totally aware of your surroundings, uh, moving with intention, just, you know, just being like, you know, both physically and mentally strong, uh, being able to endure uh, different challenges or obstacles that come your way. 
and, and building out a plan to get, get over those and, and becoming better as a, as a human, as a man as well. Um, I think leadership is also, you know, important as a man, like, you know, if, you know, once you start to have a family, you, you, your spouse, your children gonna look at you for guidance to, to pave the way for them. So I think that's, that's super important. Um, and I think just ownership and, and accountability, I'll put those two together, just, you know, understanding what your responsibilities as a, as a man are, um, uh, right, as a human are, um, and just taking care of those and, and you know, keeping your best interest um, in, the, in the forefront, man. So in a nutshell, without, without getting too deep into it, I, I, I'd say those two, uh, those three adjectives, you know, define, define what a man is. No doubt, no doubt, man. No, that that's super dope, bro. Appreciate you for dropping those gems on us, man. Bro, now if there are some people watching this right now that really vibe with your story and is, is down bad right now, and they want to contact you on IG or whatever your best social content, social media contact is, how can they find you, bro? Man, at, at Chef Kwan underscore on Instagram. That's at Chef Kwan, spelled C H E F Q U A N underscore. So that's my, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, my, my uh, quote unquote business page. Um, and kick game about that. You can, we can't let this go without you kicking game about Chef Kwan, man. Tell him a little bit about that, bro. Yeah, man. So I'm a, I'm a private chef based in D.C. Uh, I focus on, you know, bringing like exquisite restaurant style experiences and, and, you know, elegantly plated meals to the comfort of your home, your Airbnb, your hotel your event space, like wherever you want to have a dinner, if there's an oven and maybe one or two burners or just an electrical outlet, man, I could make it look better than Ruth's Chris in there. So like, like that, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I'm on. Uh, I've been doing that for a couple of years now. Um, you know, if what first started off as a hobby has turned into something that actually, you know, brings me revenue now, but also, you know, haven't lost any touch of the passion, like it's still there. And I'm only trying to run it up and, and see where else it goes. Goes. Um, looking looking forward to being able to open up restaurants in the future, as well as some other um, <clears throat> business opportunities that I'm working on uh, within the, the culinary space. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just getting started, putting my, my foot to the gas, man, and seeing where it takes me, bro. Oh, man, no doubt, no doubt. Y'all heard him right there, man. Y'all tap in. If you're ever in D.C., tap in with my man. And, I, you know, I think actually what you just mentioned, bro, and you probably already had this idea, but if you don't, I'm going to lob it to you because I think it's a really good market to tap into, as you mentioned it, is really tapping into, because DC is one of the cities where people will travel to all the time, right? Tell them to party mm -hmm. or whatever. Is there a way for you to tap into like, you know, the Airbnb experiences? You know what I'm saying? Like, so when people come to DC, they stay for the weekend, they want to meal, <clears> they, <throat> they find you in the Airbnb experience, you pull up on them and go crazy. Yeah, that, that's actually a really good idea. I haven't even thought of that. I mean, like, you know, and that's just word of mouth. Once you get up there, exactly. people book you a few times. They're like, yo, you go to DC, you got them book, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's smart. That's smart. You, you thinking, bro. Yeah, hey, hey, always. <laughs> it, it, it's this hair right here, bro. I'm telling you, we got one of these. <laughs> make it be easy to cook up some ideas, man. But yo, y'all definitely tap in with my boy Quan. If you're ever out in DC, you need that mail or whatever, you know what to highlight him right there on Instagram. You just get y'all his handle and we'll make sure we throw it up there um, so y'all can see the actual spelling of that as well. Bro, I appreciate you 10 times for joining us today on this episode. It's been a dope episode hearing about your journey, everything from Jersey, DC, Cowboys, to the Bevel Blade, your, your tribe that helped, helped you come home, <laughs> everything, bro. It's been a blessing. And for everybody, all the big fans of Trader Joe's out there, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, all that yeah. like, yeah. that love, you know what I'm the, saying? The Trader, the Trader Bros right here, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, yeah, no, nah, likewise, bro. I definitely appreciate you for having me up here, bro. It's been a dope session. And I'm definitely going to get my, my guy. I'm, uh, I'm going to send you his contact in more here, too. All right, for sure, for sure, man. Y'all, until the next episode, y'all stay bold and y'all stay bold, and we'll catch y'all next time. Peace. Yeah.